extreme risk protective orders. New Jersey, five things you need to know. Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. Today we're talking about five things you need to know about New Jersey's new red flag laws that go into effect on Sunday. Yes, extreme risk protective orders. They go into effect on Sunday. Stay right there. Five things. First of all, before we do the countdown, let's start with unconstitutional AF. Read my lips. Shall not be infringed, mofos. All right, number one, they go into effect on Sunday, September 1st, 2019, and there are two categories of people that can flag you for infringement and denial of due process. And the first one is the cops, so that means any law enforcement agent or agency within the state of New Jersey, they can do this to you. Just like that. Just like that. So the second part of that is anyone that you're related to, living with, you've had a relationship with, so or been a baby daddy to, um, even if that's in the past, even if I guess you were back in high school or whatever it is, they can red flag you. Number two. Remember I mentioned those cops, law enforcement, etc. Well, as it turns out, they are indemnified from all civil liability if they don't red flag someone and stuff still happens to them. So, yeah. Think about that for a second. If they don't red flag someone and bad stuff still happens because they missed it, they didn't do anything, they didn't see it, whatever it is, the law indemnifies them from that. So basically it's saying, there within this law, it's saying that the law is not a guarantee of protection. Hmm. You might, you might want to think about this. The law is putting in a clause that lets the cops out from doing this. So if they don't do it and you don't get protected and bad stuff still happens to you, it's not on them. So you want to think about that, all the people who supported this. It's interesting. And of course, you have to remember that the courts have also ruled that police officers have no obligation to protect and serve you. Remember that? You can go back and look, about, look at that. You've already seen it. I've already talked about it. Police departments in this country do not actually have an obligation to protect and serve you. And within this law, as I said before, you know, they've exempted themselves from any liability that comes out of this because they don't want to make it seem like they're giving you a guarantee that this is going to do anything about anything. Because it's not really going to. Another thing that we found when we were looking through these laws is that they've also put in... Um, steps and levels that you have to go through if you want to red flag a police officer. So I found that very interesting. There's levels and steps that you have to go through. In the end, if they get through all of those, if you jump through all of those hoops and levels and uh, they are red flagged, they can be fired. But with you, if someone red flags you, there's no lo uh, hoops or anything that they have to jump through. So that's interesting. Number three. There are no fees to red flag you. However, you are responsible for your own legal defense. So inside of these laws, someone that is uh, filing a protective order against you does not have to pay any fees. As a matter of fact, the police departments will help them and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to you, there's no one to help you out. You're on your own. You're going to have to get a lawyer and deal with this all yourself. Let's just remember something here in New Jersey. These guns that you have. If you're a criminal, if you're a criminal and you got these guns through illegal means, you're in heaps of trouble anyway once this all happens to you, right? If you look at the laws, the way the way that it should be anyway, if you got these illegally, you're in lots of trouble. But if you got these legally, you already jumped through a bunch of hoops. You went through extra screening, things that people in lots of other states don't have to do. You have to do in New Jersey when you get these guns. It's not very easy in New Jersey. There's already tons of infringement. What we're talking about here is that they can actually go back and they consider they can consider any violent, indictable crime, stalking, drug abuse, on and on and on that you've committed prior 
which begs the question, if you already went through all the screening that New Jersey puts up, if you've already gone through the background checks and all the limitations that exist in New Jersey, you went through that, and they're saying they can consider all of those things, but that's kind of weird. Um, if you have these problems, you're not supposed to have these guns in the first place. My, what's going on here? Number four. Once these orders are issued, you can only regain your rights if and when the courts give them back to you. So in other words, there's no set expiration of this. The courts, once they put this order on you, they are the ones that have to take it off of you. Also, the court orders are basically in effect until whatever time the court closes them. So they could do 30 days, they could do a year, they could do forever. There are no built-in penalties for people who weaponize these red flag laws in New Jersey. Just think about that. Within, within these laws, from what we saw looking into them, and you guys feel free to look into them yourself and tell us what you see, there are no built-in penalties for people who weaponize these red flag laws. The only penalties are on the person who is accused, who now becomes guilty until they prove themselves innocent. Okay, number five. Once you're red flagged, you have two choices of what can happen to your guns. So let's go through those. So the first one, you can turn them over to the cops. Now understand this, that after a year, the cops have the ability to destroy your guns. I think they're obligated to notify you once and after a, a period of a year, and then they can destroy your guns. So if something comes up, this is going on to you for a year, for whatever reason, something happens to you and you're not able to claim your guns back from the police, they can notify you one time and then they can destroy them. I think that's going to be happening a lot. So now your second choice is you can actually turn them over to a federal firearms licensee. So a gun store that's licensed by the government, you can turn them your guns over to them. And of course they can hold on to those guns for you. Now if, you, if you're not able to claim your guns back, I'm going to assume that they're going to be able to sell your guns or something else that wasn't very clear to me but what was clear is that it so if and when the time comes that you can get your guns back you have to go through all the background stuff that you went through to get them in the first place and that is is dependent on what the laws are in New Jersey so in other words you get red flagged you decide to turn your guns into an FFL a gun store in New Jersey you now have to go back through whatever process it was that you went through to get those guns in the first place. Bearing in mind, laws may have changed, all that kind of stuff. There's limitations on how many guns you can buy and what time period and all kinds of things in New Jersey. The guns that you hand over to that store, you might not even be able to claim them back again. And that would be tragic. So there you go, that's five things from our research that we figured everyone should know in the state of New Jersey in regards to red flag laws, um, extreme risk protective orders. You know, let us know what you think about this. What, you, what do you guys think about this? What have you found? Are there other things that you saw that we didn't see? Even if you're not in the state of New Jersey, I think there's 16 other states right now that have red flag laws let us know if you're in one of those states what do you think about that if there's people trying to bring these unconstitutional red flag laws to your state let us know about it we are going to talk about other places that this is going on we do talk about this on the podcast all the time it's called uh, who moved my freedom and it's on the lifestyles of the locked and loaded channel we do it usually monday to friday 7 p.m to 9 p.m eastern time it's a lot of fun you can join us there hang out ask questions we have lots of uh companies and other folks in the gun community come on the show we always have a good time feel free to join us all right now if you're thinking hey what can i do to help fight back against uh all these infringements on my rights my constitutional rights things that are taking away our right to due process. One of the things that we think is a very good idea for you to do is join up and support the GOA. If you check the description of this video, there will be a link down there where you can sign up with the GOA. We actually have a little bit of a discount with that. It's like 15 bucks if you go through our link. 
Um, we've had quite a few people sign up with that and support the GOA so far. So thanks to all those guys. If you're thinking about it, this is a good way to go. If you have other places, um, if there's local places in your state that are doing something or other organizations that you think that are out there fighting for, for the Second Amendment, um, then absolutely I recommend you to invest in your future. Invest in your own rights. Okay, so that's it. I'm Hank Strange. Thanks a lot for joining us here. Thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button, thumbs up, and ring the bell so that you could be notified every time we post videos. I hope you guys are enjoying these. I hope you find it informative. We'll be in there answering all those questions. And you know what? You can help us out by sharing it. I'm out of here. Thanks a lot, guys. Peace.